Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage the Gold Bar BDI Class Everything John Simpson. I feel that I'm that thin. Thank you guys so much. It is a pleasure and an honor to be here with you this afternoon, and I think you're going to wrap up my weekend. So I'm really excited for that, to share a lot of wonderful stories with you, and a lot of the different things that I like to do whenever I create not only a Naha collection, but to create the one main thing that we all share within this room, within this building, within this weekend, is the love of doing really brilliant hair and hair color. Right? Isn't that what it's about? I don't care if you speak Goldwell, my brand, another brand, or somebody else's brand. It's okay, you're speaking Pola, and that's good. What I want to do today is I want to take you into the story in these beautiful canvases of how can I... So like, just back up just a little bit. Give me a little space. Wow. No, I'm kidding. So with it, we're going to have a lot of fun, but how can I actually evolve into what is the new blonde? How can I actually take a coloration that make color glow, illuminations of color? How can I give hair color tonality something special? Because I always say that no matter where we are within the globe, we all share the same climate, right? You probably have the client that's a retouch and a Band-Aid foil, right? Yeah, you just put a couple on the part. Yeah. You probably also have the client that's maybe a 32 Rolodex partial highlight. 32 on the top, two on the sides. I pull my hair up, let's put some in the neck. Level 10, shooting off the neck. Because that looks natural. <laughs> With it as well, we probably have the other main staple that's become the bread and butter client, the 436 foil highlight. They're really a single process, but you know, whatever, put it in foil, yay! <laughs> Here, what we're going to do is I want to look inside of how can I create magical colors. Colors from scalp to end that have even tonality and clarity. We're going to look inside of a whole theory of something I base everything on, is that your light is only as strong as the dark that sits beside it. It's not new, but what sometimes happens is we forget it. Because in a busy salon day, if you've ever found yourself in a 30-minute hair color window, you have the client's 10 minutes late, they have a steaming hot latte in their hand, and they didn't even bring you one, and they said they were in traffic, and then they sit down and they say, I think I want to try something new. If you've ever found yourself saying, no, I love this on you, We'll do it next time. With it, let's take a look at balancing all of the different colorations from scalp to head. You're going to hear throughout the program that I always speak to the hair as fabric, and I always think that we have three. You have a fabric of vinyl, you have a fabric of wool, and you have a fabric of cotton. And sometimes, either whenever you're flipping a canvas that is 400 foils into a single process, or whenever you have a client that wants to have low lights or dimension, flat, and then maybe on the cotton on the end, it got a little bit too much uptake or stain. So it wasn't really scalp to end silk, but it was a shade of see-through, a shade of weird, and a shade of ooh. <laughs> With this, how can I create, within the Goldwell brand, or even in, just within hair color, brilliant tonality, illumination of tones, that I can see radiant blondes the whole way through with special nuances. How many of your blondes, and I know those of you that are West Coast, I know that it's always something you tell my blondes, they hate gold, they hate red. But even in the fashion world, right, what's happened is our blondes are starting to embrace it just a little bit. Not a shade of blarange by any means, right? They don't want to run around with blarange. But they do maybe want a little bit of a sparkle. They want reflection in their hair. They don't want powdery white any longer. They want to see shine. They want to see dimension. So what we're going to do is I'm going to break these canvases down in just a little bit, creating beautiful blonde tones with actually amber blushes. How can I create gorgeous reds into a whole nuanced shade, but instead of thinking browns or golds, what we're doing is we're actually creating a beautiful red, but it's supported by shades of navy, by shades of violet, and then shades of apricot, right? which makes the red much stronger. How do I create illumination, liquid hair color, drenched in reds? Right? She's my tangerine dream. And it's a whole new spin, and just give me a soft little twirl there. Yeah that even through the texture, I wanted you to be able to see the coloration. It's a whole other spin to what was ombre, ombre. And here, creating a beautiful melted illusion that then translates into a four working canvas zone of great cool tonalities of brown, accentuated in the unexpected of a really brilliant red-violet. Give me a little spin, Kevin. Come on. 
work. Cool shade, but at the same, she doesn't have the red shade. Because how many of our browns even now, I said about the blondes, how many of you brunettes hate to see red? Right? They're like, I don't want it red. I don't want it red. <laughs> and what happens is sometimes I think the depth within hair color or control oftentimes ends up to look a little darker than. Right? When we speak about where does hair color live, where does hair color live within the level, where does hair color live within the placement, what we're going to find out is often we see or you've had to rescue maybe that level five that you've added a four level to it, right? Well, at level four, what coloration really lives at a level four? What is naturally in the hair at a four? Well, it's red, but it's actually within that blue zone. So at a level four, it's really violet. So if you've ever taken a level five, put a level four to add a little depth to it, and it went a little burgundy, right? That's probably why. Even if it was ash or even if it was warm. We're going to look at how can I adjust my different tones. In the end, in Georgia, creating... Go ahead, turn, baby. Turn. Yes. Hush to Bazool. So here... <laughs> inside joke, my Italian princess. Here, how do I create beautiful radiance? And Georgia came to us. She was that dirty Italian girl, right on the lighter side, but it had that dirty Italian girl level six, right, which was really a five, and it was tainted with pieces of four. Plus, she had about level 12 highlights on top of it. <coughs> with this, what we did is into a compact flip. We cleaned it all out, and then with the power of a lumen, created the most brilliant shadows. Maybe I'm not going to slice golden shades and electric sunshine pieces through it. But you can see what's happening is that the light's only as strong as the dark. The beautiful blush apricot that sits on top is much stronger because of it. If I were to take this same kind of neutral shadow and work it throughout the interior of the hair like we've done with Diane, it's the exact same illusion. It's just where did I place it? You can see the soft hands that just spill throughout it. Just walk out for me and do your special turn that I love so much. Whoa, word, yes. So, she's who I think I am sometimes. But, just saying. Here, you can see the beautiful special tan illusions. Now, we placed it into a special concept, which I'll share with you in technique. But here, what makes her high lift blonde that was 436 foils with that natural, for, for sure, probably like 30, but with it, how do I actually flip it, scalp to end brilliance? It's the power of Goldwell High Lift. If you speak Goldwell, I use an 11 SV with blonde and cream ash with double 30 volume, and that's it. We drove it into the new hair zone, we adjusted and balanced into the middle wool, and at the very end, I did a quick wash with a Colorance Express Blonde, a nine level cream, done. And into the shadows, it's about the specific placements, about where does it live within the contours of the head. Yeah? But I think they look really special. Do you think? Yeah. Great. So with it, what I'm going to share is just into the whole illusion of photographic hair. I think about into hair color that we do every single day needs to be as special as what translates a photograph. Because how many times does someone actually bring to you a photograph of hair color and they're looking at the light reflection of the flash and say, I like that color. <laughs> yeah, it happens. I like that color. It's like that doesn't exist. That's photography. Anyway. But whatever. Here, what we're going to do, <laughs> what we're going to do is I want to break it down into creating a story. I'm going to share some of my own special blue show because it's my very first collection. Whenever I entered Naha, this was my first Naha collection that I shot and the first one that I went with. Right? So I know work. Don't clap for that. I got lucky and paid people. <laughs> But really, but the whole thing that I did with it and why I wanted to share it is because no matter what we do, back to the love of no matter which brand you speak, the love of doing what you do is really special. And what I did, I get, I'm very fortunate that I get to do a lot of collections for the Goldwell brand and a lot of the imagery. But I shot this from me, so it was really what was here without needing branded specifics, right? So here, it allowed me, and those of you that know what I do, if I talk about hair color, I don't just like to think about ash, or neutral, or gold. I like to think about turquoise. I like to think about pistachio. I think to, like to think about maybe things like um, maybe olive shades. I like to look at turquoises. And with that, what are they doing is they allow you then to translate the work, because essentially, what do you need? How many of you in your everyday world have the brunette client that's come to you and they've said they want the shade of caramel? 
I want caramel. Caramel. <laughs> so you know that that's my client voice, and I love my clients, and sometimes because they give me money, but sometimes they sound like, ah, oh, in my head. So if they sit down and they say, I want caramel, I'm like, okay. <laughs> Generally, I know that in any situation, you're probably thinking if they have layers of paint on their hair, it's probably going to turn to a shade of orange, some way, somehow. <laughs> then you're like, you lift it up, and you're like, oh, that's a little bit orangey, a little more red orange. It must be from like Norway. I don't know that kind of caramel. But anyways, you sit there and you're like, oh, diggity dang, stings dang, dig the dog a bone. What am I going to put on a nail? And how many times though have you, as you walk through the mall, the streets, a show, it doesn't matter, you get to see caramel passed off, or people's interpretation of caramel as gold, as ash, or just as neutral, right? Or just a shade of orange. No, that's caramel. That's real nice. So here, you think about it, in the lifting of it, as you hit a level seven, I spoke about what lives at a level before, but what lives at a level seven truest if you're lifting? Okay, lots of different answers, right? It's orange, but truest, it's a red orange. They're still red as you travel from the level six. So oftentimes, whenever you would go through, you think, okay, all right, orange, you'll put kind of an ash controller on top of it, right? Something that's going to hit the orange, a blue base. And then, have you ever got to see it turn into a shade of like a bruised apricot? Something a little bit weird, right? That it's controlled, but it's a really pretty gray golden pearl. Yeah. Because it's a shade of orange, right? There's red that exists. So if you take a shade of like a turquoise, right, that's blues and greens, what are you going to control? You're going to squash out the orange and squash out the reds and get a shade of a true neutral that I like to call khaki. We'll talk about it a little, it's khaki, right, it keeps it safe, it's like a gab bag. Everyone knows it, I'm sure everyone's worn it sometime or another, <laughs> but the khaki's still the same. So here, in the translation of the story, I really started with my pistachio story for control, but also take pistachio and shear it off a little bit, and think that same canvas that's had some red. How many times have you had a client that you know had red in their hair, you decolorize them, and you see, oh, yay, you had like an R, a red tone in your hair at some point. You're like, yay, what happens now? What most often happens is we go through and we start decolorizing more on top of the red, right? And then what do we do? It turns into a shade of... Well, it's like an orangey pink, right, into a salmon-like shade. So once you get salmon or cotton candy, if you can really go in there, can you squash it ever? Can you keep decolorizing it out? Not really. It's only getting to a lighter shade of pink. What you need to do is neutralize it, right? What shade would neutralize cotton candy pink? Pistachio green, right? It's just a palest shade of a green. And once I would neutralize something, then when I would lift on top of that, what would you achieve? Neutral, right? Once you've squashed the situation, then I start my decolorizing work, you're going to have a shade of neutral. So I've already corrected the problem. So think about shearing off your green bases as controllers. Think about adjusting into any tones. And I know within multi-brands, they all have the capabilities to do it. One of my favorites, if you speak gold well, mix two to one, double gas, 30 or 40 volume, blonding cream and 7MB. 15 milliliters of blonding cream, five mils of 7MB is your perfect lift and squash. Done. You'll get a shade of khaki. Ta-da! Easy breezy. Thank you so much, client. Give me some money. All right. Can we move on just a little bit? Just a couple of things I want to share with you. And in the back, I don't know your name, happy friend, but thank you. With it, if you, we can just move through it, um, just on like a little count. But with it, what I want to do is I want to look at a collection. And I want you to think about what would a collection represent? And a collection not only just within your own personal salon work, but if you are going into competition, if you want colored advertisements, my goal within the first shots that you're going to see is how could I actually see and feel the texture of the photograph and actually see the color through a black and white image? So if we look through it and we go a little bit further, I wanted you to be able to feel the different texture into the double imagery. I wanted you to be able to see the different translations in the tones. As you feel the texture that actually pops and you can see it just moving through, some of you may be thinking that it's a shade of gray. Some of you may be thinking only view is orange. Some people see pink, some people see, see blues. And with it, it's probably an answer of deep. 
all of the above. It's about how do you actually move through within hair color design into a black and white. It still is about your shadows at that time. So taking a little bit more, how to create the most icy whites. It's not just one single shade. What makes that shade of cigarette paper white, right? or that maybe that beautiful marshmallow white, really radiant, is the shine slices that you're going throughout, taking a shade of maybe a diluted silver, right? something that is the highest level 10 as an ash, and adjusting it with one milliliter, one drop, one shot, one right? So maybe something that lives at a level two, you take that blue and it's going to adjust it. Seeing and feeling it, I always create. And with anything I do, moving forward, where does it really come from? You think about the different things that are going to make up what you do. And all of us, you got to see so many great things this weekend, and now you're going to take it back with you, right? And you're going to start throwing it down. And I want to share tricks with you that are going to, number one, increase your creativity, because that's what it's all about. Because sometimes it is easy to say, no, I love this on you. We'll do it next time. And here, taking, and let's go just a little bit further, taking a thought process of something that brings in design and takes it from what is inspiration into real life. That whole collection was built from these images. And what this was is this was a flood in Asia, and all the spiders actually ran to the trees, right? And they started to create this really wicked weapon. And going just a little bit further, Next, you can see that it just kind of took over in the mass. So that was kind of the mood and the feeling. And I know you might think that sounds crazy, but that's kind of the dork that I am. But I promise you, a lot of us are. Here, taking a little bit more, I still wanted to see that reflection that's happening from the architectural design. And then in the color palette, just a little bit more, you can see that in from those beautiful grays, that gradation of color, you can see grays and blues and pinks and violets. And honestly, that was just something as I was having a cup of coffee on my back patio, right? And it just struck me like that. Because isn't that what we all do? How many of you are guilty of it? You might have even done it this weekend. But how many of you have ever gone to a mall and you're walking down, you're going through the store, and you're like, mm-hmm, you almost got that right, huh? <laughs> right? You see it. How many times have you ever got to see a new car? A car turns right around the corner and you're like, ooh, I love that. Right? And how many times have you walked into a brand new structure, a building, right? And you're like, oh, there's something sexy about this. I don't know what it is, but you like every second of it. Why? It's what makes it special. It's in the design of either something based on a circle, something of a square, or something of a triangle into the placement of the lines, which we're going to look at, which really made it happen. I know it sounds crazy, and I know some of you have attended my course that goes through the whole design elements, and it really does make you start to see and think about design within every single thing that you see. Cool? Okay. If I look inside of this, right, this really massive staircase, where does your eye go to? Center, right? Taking something like this and turning it into, and one more, you take it and you turn it right into a hair color diagram. The central focus is right on the top lid, and you have all that interior movement. Think about this on a high blonde, and the client comes in and they say that they want, you suggest, they want your dimensional shades, and you say, I, what about some low lights? Do you ever have a client fall out of your chair, a level 10 blonde, and they're like, I want to be brown! Right? <laughs> so here, what about, because clients that want something of depth, and they want durability and dimension, they don't want dark pieces <laughs> popping on their lid, right? They want it happening throughout the middle. You take another structure such as this, something a little bit stronger than it, right, within coloration, within design, take it a little bit more, and you can turn it into something that has wonderful structure throughout the top lid, and adjust it. A circle, if we think about it, is a circle softer as it's strong? It's softer than a square, right, because a square is the strongest, but isn't a circle really a square with the corners popped off, right? You think about, what do I place inside of it? I take the horizontal line. That's the strength, right? That's where you get the choo-choo kind of highlight that starts to sit on the top lids, right? Sometimes people get nuts, and they're like, double dark, single light, double dark, single light, piano keys. Yay. It's not that either, but there is more. It's the strength of the horizontal line that is allowing you just to see it. So why not place it within something a little softer than, such as this, right? And it turns into a dimensional background. Wait, back up one more time. Don't get crazy. <laughs> one more. There we go. 
if you see into it, you can see the top lid, the colorations are melting through the middle. What was the top was just two different background colors flipped. One was an RR, one was an RO, right? And there you go, design. Dimension to design just by changing the background color, right? Do it with a glaze, do it as a dimensional highlight on a brunette. This is a client that even if you had a, if they had existing dark within the hair and they wanted dimensional shades of brown, like Jennifer Lopez, right? They want to be J-Lo, or even better, they want to be Jennifer Aniston, because who doesn't? Still. So, with it, I mean, it is kind of funny, right? I mean, you know, move on. I did it a long time ago. But, uh, anyways, it's my funny. I can't. It's my favorite. So I know it's bad of me, but whatever. People are funny. So, anyways. Into this, you think about it, you can take that same kind of design, you do a traditional highlight onto a client that's brunette, go within this sectioning and alternate two different overlays throughout. You're going to have three different shades in single process, right? You highlight it and then dimensional tone it and you're done, right? It doesn't have to be crazy town. You don't have to go back in and whittle and weave and create eight different shades. Do it in your toning, right? And create it in your decolorizing lift. Let's go further, please. Right? You take something again that's so massive into structure, but it still has oval softness. Going just another, how can I actually adjust the strength of the circle high and low? Because there are some clients that like to see the strength of a highlight here, right? Boom, 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 boom. And that's cool. Why can't I still adjust colorations that happen through the interior that I see it through the wool and the cotton? And then I turn this into the boy Alejandro, but yet it goes into something that's going to be more silver and also the navy. If you take that shade of the deep blue that's there, I put it on a blonde in this story. However, that navy is going to squash the orange warmth that happens on a brunette. And it doesn't, even though I say navy to you, it doesn't mean that they're going to look blue because that black and navy is going to give me great control. Okay. So, thinking about, again, where does color live, what is it going to do for you? It's perfect, right, into your design. A bit more. Into the first original collections, this was something that, um, I'll tell you, it, it's, it was something that I, I had not, I knew how to create a collection, but it was something of my own, what did I really want to see? And finding the inspiration, you've got to see in the video that I really do. I like to look at cars, I do like to look at fashion, and I do like to see what's happening in the world, right? And just bear with me for two seconds while I share it, and then I'm going to share some other techniques. The whole way through, they just melt. It's very beautiful. Will you hold her, your friend? Thanks. She's like, it's creeping me out, man. But I can see color that moves and lifts. Keep going. Keep going, turning. All the way through, multi-reflections. You can see it glistening throughout the whole interior. But on this head of hair, whenever it comes into you, and she's I think I want a full highlight. Yay! It's awesome. So, moving it through, the whole radiance of it. Simple technique, and you have color that exists all the way through. As we translate back over to this, thank you so much. Take your friend. Thank you so much. As you push volume throughout the middle, you get wonderful height. And also around the face, what makes Jennifer Lopez's and what makes Jennifer Aniston's color so special is what? That you can't see where the color starts and where it stops. It lives in the hair and it looks great any which way. Yeah? This is the kind of technique that can take you there. Right? So I hope that you enjoy. We'll change. Here also, one last question, one thing to point out before we travel forward. There's always the question of how do you flip your client that's already been with you existing into a new technique. Right? Number one, don't make it labor intensive, but at the same, what's going to happen? You're going to be working within zones that really need to be touched. How do you read a highlight retouch now? You go back in and slice or weave through it, right? Do it the same way. You're just putting it in a different position, and that's okay. So I can still give them that full illusion, or flip it into whatever you need. Okay? Thanks, we can go forward. You guys feel okay? You with me? Mm -hmm. Yay! Woo! A little of the dork of me, and I really do think cars are sexy. I don't know how to fix them, but I like them. Here, I like to look at inside of this, the reflection that it happens, as well as the round movement, creating that strength and elongation. If I go inside of the design of it, right, you can see that into the round, beautiful red, what makes this special is there's actually only four working sections, but there are only two are into design. These round, beautiful, collapsed shapes, sort of like what we have on Georgia with the blonde. What's fabulous is 
you can really see the color movement. But the color shape, it, the shape itself is collapsed. But at the same, it needs that beautiful round color illusion. By just working surface top, or just going through vertically, the color is never going to make the outside line. And you see it a lot in fringes, don't you? You'll see a fringe that's right here, and the color sits right above it. Like, OK, just maybe we'll cut up a little bit higher. Right? And then you start seeing all these lines underneath. You're like, oh, no, that's texture. That's wisdom. Yay. Into the design of it, you can see that into the four working sections, flip them around. You can continue this through, make it a pinwheel if you choose, and that's good to you. But with it, how can I, why can't I take that and make that a low light design? And on the other side, make a horizontal sectioning and make it a highlight. Because the horizontal pieces will fall right through the diagonal pieces and give it a spectacular illusion that it's not expected. It has a whole brand new feel to it. Just a little bit further, I always think about telling your story, right? Telling your story is really about, do I want it a little strong, do I want it subtle, or do I want it feisty? Because sometimes a low light into a blonde, oh, I will see often that it's, um, you know, tickle dice, level 9, level 10. It's like, I think I want a low light. You're like, I know they're going to come back and they want your ability. And they're going to tell me they lost their dimension. Their dimension. I like this shade. I like this color right here. This color. What happens is we start to create shades of chocolate and vanilla or ketchup and mustard quite often. Right? And why is because it's just that instant thought. And back to those pistachios and back to those different colorations, how can I actually change into positioning where their color lives? When I look about this and I take you into the chromatic scale, the chromatic scale really is something that it talks about color value, right? And this is not a gold ball chart. This is a chart only that says gold ball because I put the logo on it. That's it. I'm not, I'm really just being honest. So honestly, it's a generic hair color pigmentation, and you can see the value. Back to the level five, if I look at it, I'm going to just step to this side, and we can all see. Back to that level five, I told you, if you've ever wanted depth, right, and you went to a level four, what lives across? What lives in there, level four? But you can see what's on the very left. It's violet, right? Now, also, you can see here, four gold. No one has ever come up to you and said, I love your sparkling golden, golden level four hair. <laughs> like, it just, it doesn't happen, right? It's in the deeper, cool shade. And yeah, you can adjust it gold. But back to, this is still going to be bluer than, which will give you depth. But if you've ever tried to use it and squash the red, that's why it turned a little bit burgundy. <laughs> back to the level seven, you can see that there's the red orange. That's where the blarange comes from whenever you're lifting or whenever you're trying to balance out tonalities, right? So here, what we can do is think about adjustments. If I want to go through the coloration, and I always think that if I am just at one shape, if I am one single target shape, if I go through that hair and I want depth, or I want a winter color, if you go two to five milliliters of something that's bluer or darker than, two to five mils, Right? Just under a half of an ounce into your formula of something bluer and deeper, that would be the perfect adjustment into your coloration for depth, but also you stay within the same tone. So if I were, let's say for an example, a 7 kg, a level 7 copper gold, I think otherwise across we can translate a couple like 7 stroke 4-3, right? I think is another one. But with it, anything that's going to be a 7 level copper gold, and if I drop it into maybe something like a 6R, a 6KR, a 6K, 2 to 5 mils, under a half an ounce, what that's going to do is give me perfect depth, but it's not going to make it browner depth. How many of you have ever been guilty of whenever you try to create depth, you put N in your formula? You put N in there? You don't want that to tell me. But a lot of people like to put N into the formulas, right? Because it's a little bit safe, right? But here, I always think about natural or neutral series, and ends, right? They're really meant for what? Gray coverage. Gray coverage. Now, natural hair eventually gets to a shade of not pretty. That's why we color it, right? So why would you add a shade of not pretty into your formula, right? Whenever you're not covering gray. You know, it just doesn't make sense. You know it's true. Just put a little N in there. Just a little N. I don't want to get too warm. Let's take a peek. Familiar to these canvas illusions, whenever you're thinking about creating a really fantastic light reflection, creating beautiful depth, 
you can see from the soft raspberry roses that happen throughout the bottom into the blonde, you can see that same translation, adding a little more of something that's going to be pinker then, throughout the left into the brunette, it gives a special nuance to it. And I know sometimes people look at these colorations, and I think you would agree that any of the models, right, they have hair that is really illuminated, but it's not avant-garde, right? It is not over the top. It still can take avant-garde shading, and placing it on the right canvas in the right position will make it special. You know, my home base is Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and I don't know if you know about Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, but, you know, at the same time, it's a really cool city, right? But it's really quite conservative, right? It's a conservative marketplace. You're like, mm-hmm. I bet. No, and in the same way, I joke about those same clients is because the clients, they want shades that are special, right? But they really want something that's a little bit more than chocolate and vanilla and ketchup and mustard, right? You can take all of these shade variations and adjust them into your canvas and have just a good time, right? And I always say to you that on my salon blog, there are about 17 salons on that block, right? So at the same, if I'm here with you, why couldn't my client, if I'm just giving them partial highlight, Rolodex panels, right, and I'm doing chocolate and vanilla, why couldn't they just go to any of the other 17, right? Because don't you think, it's about the value. You, I joke about the word economy, right? The economy. And we did get hit a little bit, but it's not that it's recovering. It's a new economy, isn't it? Right? They're just going in there, and they're going to spend their money, but they want to make sure they get exactly what they need because they know their hair isn't going to be large. And one of the things that we're all, or not all of us are guilty of, but the industry is guilty of, does it look red to you? Does my hair look red, especially the blondes? Is it red? No, it's not red. Look at it outside. Go in the parking lot, it's fine. Wear it for a week, tell me when you get home. <laughs> so, moving in just a little bit more. Thinking about the shades that you can create. Thinking about the rusty iron, the ruby red, and the shade of sunset. Adjusting within all of these levels, if I'm using pure shades against the natural, I can adjust it to whatever it really needs to be. Moving it just a little bit forward again, right? Shades of rosewood, right? Shades of peach and shades of even burnt copper. What this is doing is this is allowing me to create natural spectrums of shade, but it can use as an overlay, it can work throughout the interior, it can work as detail. It's whatever you want it to be. One more. One of my favorites into the smoky haze. This just gives me a whole other color range that's going to keep control. Going through, either creating these beautiful kind of these nuanced illusions for a photograph, or at the same time into my everyday work. Think about this versus always going back to your pens. Yeah? You know, and I do tell myself this all the time, right, is that life is not a dress rehearsal, that you gotta live it and love it to create it, right? Because if you are bored, it's your fault. Right? So here, what I want to do is, let's just break down, let's bring up the lovelies one more time, and then I'm going to let you fly. Oh, models. I know. I know. They're like, do you see how happy these heels are? You think they're cute, huh? Huh. Well, they are cute, but, you know, whatever. You're going to try standing enough. All right. So again, come up with me, baby. So into the red, one more time, we could go through, and if you speak into what is... Goldwell's top sheet. We have a max red, okay? And in our max red, you're gonna see some new advancements, and I actually just kind of gave you a sneak peek with it, but it's a six level violet violet. It's a VV, okay? And what's beautiful is you can see the fantastic radiance to it, and as the light hits it, it's just the perfect spectrum of tone. But turn back again, wait, it's brown, wait, what? It's violet. Wait, what? It's brown. Wait, what? It's violet. And what's wonderful is it gives you multiple reflections throughout, but it's not just screaming electric. Okay? Whenever we king in into the canvas, it, uh, really, actually, she has this really nice, deep, coarse hair. Right? She is that dark level 4 or 5, for sure. But also, I wanted to give her something that was not just going to be red, because I wanted it to be more special. Into the nuanced tones, you want to think about what colors would exist in nature, but what color tones would just melt, a new kind of shine and finish? Into this front, I used a concept into a very familiar to the first image onto the mannequin, but into a butterfly wing. And into the single wing, working over the parietal round where color needs to live, we did a soft decolorizing with silk lift. From the underneath, you can see that we created on the decolorized hair the shade of the navy. The navy on top of, and navy is taking from a lumen, 
the blue BB at all with two milliliters of Na at two. Okay? And what it's done is it just gave her that really pretty turquoise color. And you can't really see the turquoise otherwise, can you? But what it's doing is sitting against the cool red, it's just allowing the shades to become a little more special as we move through. The next coloration of panels is turning into the violets. You can see a nice diluted combination of a PKBB combination to create the nice violet on top of the blonde, which then supports the soft blush that sits here. And as we look at it, I think that number one, we've done it that just showcases the line of the haircut, brilliant. But also, it just gives her a whole new life into shadows, right? And why couldn't that be something special that you could do every single day? Move a traditional fringe line and create the same placement. Circular strength in the round, the point that stops here, and you do the same kind of concave point to curve that sits within the front fringe line. Cool? I think it looks really special and it's a great new way to just adjust into the reds. Good. After that, she is into an 11 series highlight, 11 SV with blonde and cream ash. But also, into the beautiful tan pieces, right, what happened is there is a new shade from Color Zoom this year. And going into the color arsenal, it's a 7 level copper violet, a 7 KV. So what's great is you have a little of the unexpected that it's a seven level copper, but working with a conjunction of the violet that's a little softening and neutralizing, it gives me the full round out foundation of what is warm and what is cool. People like N into their hair color, why? Number one, because it's safe, but what makes up neutral? Red, yellow, and blue, right? Red, yellow, and blue. So whenever you're thinking about a foundation of color, and I take a copper, which we know is working through what? It's reds and yellows, right? The in conjunction that make it. But also then you take your violet, which is made by what? Blue and red. What you're doing is you create all of the shades of red, yellow, and blue throughout a neutral foundation. Why she has scalped it and even coloration is because you created the perfect neutral. You created the tone as well. Again, slicing that through, I think it just gives a whole new illusion to what could be a strawberry blonde, right? It could be a whole new illusion to what could be just a soft shadow in detail. Minute micro slices or weaves running through her, that could just give a whole new shadow and create brilliant light all the way through it. Good? Thank you, Diane. Gorgeous. Work. Come up to me. So with Erin, this is, she is actually, she's a lovely that I've known for a little while. And with this, I know last year I had Erin a little cooler then, right? She was a little darker and much more, she had a lot of violet running through her hair. And I just think that it's that perfect translation because how do your clients evolve every year, right? A lot of your reds, I mean, we do have clients that are crazy town. They're like Lindsay Lohan, right? That want to, I want to be brown. No, I want to be blonde. No, I want to be red. No, I want to be blonde. Okay, relax. You want some water? So... If I look inside of it, if I think about it, what is the translation? Working into the high level golden coppers, as well as working into the diffusion of the golden coppers and the yellow, the light just radiates through, right? As I look through the diffusion, peek it. Isn't that wild? Wait. Sunshine. Okay. It's a tangerine dream, is really what I've been joking about. Because I know that as the reds become a little more on the orange side of fashion, it's something that I went through first because she had modeled for some other people and they made her a little browner, right? They made her a little brown. So I did a silk lift wash first, right? And a silk lift wash, if you speak bold well, it's your high lift performance liner, right? But there's silk proteins within it that it actually keeps the hair's integrity. If you don't, with the silk lift protein, what they do is they fill in the, cord, the cuticle layer and give you something to decolorize on so it does not ever compromise the hair's natural quality. So here, one scoop of Silk Lift Strong, 35 milliliters of 20 volume Silk Lift, and 35 milliliters of a deep cleansing shampoo gave me a Silk Lift wash, a new spin to what was once a bleach wash. Okay? And that's something that, especially at shows, at shoots, you know, it's everyday life as well. I mean, if a client comes in and they want a corrective flip or a seasonal cleanse, a couple levels lighter, do I want to go through this whole labor-intensive process of color reducers just to get it there if I'm only traveling a couple levels? Okay. What we did is at the shampoo bar, it was done. It worked through the mid-shaft and into the end. Right? However, just to make it a little more of ombre gone quick, 
A fresh batch of Silk Cliff Strong 20 volume without the depolarizing shampoo, they already had shampoo in it, right? So all they did is they took then the Silk Lift and worked it then through her ends throughout the last another 10 minutes. And for the last five, bumped it into her new zone. Already done in a beautiful, even canvas ombre, and she was ready for coloration. Right? So think about it, it doesn't have to be that quick. And we didn't make her purposely fuzzy, right? Because I wanted to show you ombre. You know, geez, it in. No, okay, now paint. Right? No. Because that kind of, I don't think that it's ever bad. I wanted a little more accuracy to it. But I want to see beautiful melted illusions that just come all the way to life, working again within the coppers, within the golden coppers, the yellow, just make it all happen. And the shine line that just melts out from the OR base into the golden copper, I think is just brilliant. Gorgeous. Thank you, Erin. A little bit of Catherine, but here, just a little bit more. If you look at the brunette, one thing that we have at this point, and going back to why I giggle about, what are the what are the actual cool browns, right? Those browns that don't want to see any reds, but also brunettes that I don't want to see them turn opaque or dark or dusty, right? A lot of over-controlled brunettes start to look like shoe polish, right, after a while. With the stay cool browns, what this does is it has blue content to it that it surrounds the inner cortex and it stays. So this is actually a sixth level, this is the BM working through, that gives me a perfect scalp to end, even bit. And in Catherine's natural hair, she has that natural dark amber, right? So there's a lot of red adjustment that's in the hair. And if you need something, it's something that's going to be back to that turquoise base, that's exactly what she is. Okay. Then spilling through into the red violets just gives it a whole new life. Perfect, thank you. Georgia, again, I did speak about it, decolorizing it off, thinking about beautiful new shade combinations, great melting of tone. I just think that what's special, very familiar to our first canvas, you can see that the outside with the soft oranges going throughout the middle that starts to become something more diluted of a GKYY done in all three combinations, getting lighter and brighter as it comes along, just gives you that perfect radiance along the front fringe line. And I think about that even if I wanted to, let's say that she was, let's take her into a red story. Why couldn't this be the same level seven copper? Why couldn't I just use something of a six level right around the face to create shadow and depth and make everything else look lighter and brighter, right? Same kind of concept can apply, but let's just make it a little more special. Thanks, guys. Okay. So... So where I want to go next, really quick, is I showed you the front design. I want to show you exactly where it goes, and I want to share with you the finish. Thinking about it, making it easy, keeping it great, and I'm sorry, camera guy, I'm coming right back up. It won't drive you nuts. But here, I told you about the illusion, creating the circular forms, working into the soft points, and you can see that there's three designs. I work first from thick into thin, continuing around with base in between, thin into thick. And then in the back exterior, you can see that there are two points with a circular bit throughout the middle. What that's doing is all into the zone of exactly where color needs to actually exist. Okay? On that top lid again, it's going to be background color. What we've done, will you help me with this thing? What we've done is into the pre-coloration, Going through on thermal papers, we alternate it from the background color, which you see is done. You work into a diagonal slice that continually pivots around the full head. So all of the interior is going to have tone, and you can see that it's only just this top section that is left out. Back into a client that needs to see the light panels running off the top, why couldn't I slice through it? It's perfect. Because then, taking one step further, and maybe, even, maybe we could even walk those through like a van moment. You can see into the coloration that it gives the illusion of full head coloration as it runs high, medium, and low, all the way through. Great luster, great tone. She could be a secret freak and flip the hair, right? If she likes, to, you know, a secret freak. A little party underneath. That's good. Who doesn't like a little special something? But you can see that the tones just really move all the way through, and no matter where it goes, you can't see the start line and you can't see the stop. 
It just is. I was talking about, in colorations, about the 7KV. You can see the shadows that were onto the blonde, but you can see it also running throughout the mid-tone that makes the light really special. Into the five-level violet ash, which is another new fascinating reflect shade, the beautiful, cool shadows that it's not purple, and nor is it just over-controlled. It has wonderful tonality to it and beautiful reflective shine. A question, though, that happens is, where does it live in the color wheel? It doesn't, right? Since it was scrapped, like, it doesn't. You're not going to find it. What we've done is because creating these new hybrid shades just allows you a whole other tool within your color arsenal to make it happen. Yeah? It's nothing different than what you could do every single day. I do think that going throughout the designs, you know, my, the biggest thing of change that happens is I think that I put us into two different categories of colorist, and I fall into both of them. That I think that we have the very OCD colorist, right, and hair cutter, that the over-controlled designer, and it's awesome. Because in a haircut, that's the person that's going to take a section and then you bring it down and you cut it. And then in a foil, it's that person that takes the slice and then you leave it. <laughs> then you take your little foil and you take it. A little hot pocket. <laughs> and that's okay, right? But at the same time, then I think we have the other type of colorist, right? And the other type of stylist that they just, they're the artist and they just, you know, I don't even know what I do. <laughs> the hair just speaks to me. It's awesome. The hair's energy just. <laughs> like that's, that's awesome. And I like both, right? Because the OCD colorist, I think it's perfect because you have the discipline. But sometimes to change, right, into the work that you do, you just gotta let it go. Just love it. Just let it go. You know, it's like getting a nod out of your shoulder. Okay? And also for the artist that just feels it and speaks to it, just get it together a little bit. Right? And understand why you're doing what you do. And you'll have the perfect marriage. Right? Because all of these designs, I promise you, from formulations into foundations, these are not things that will set you up to fail, I promise. Right? Because I'm a colorist just like you, within a salon. I just get to do a couple other things because I choose to. Right? And I know I'm a big dork and I share cotton-filled trees of web with you, but you know, that's where a collection came from. It's the not hopper. And it really is something that I think that is, it, it's special because you know, back to you, if you are bored, it is your fault, right? You know, and because we have the ability to change any single thing that you want to do. And if you remember three essential shapes and three essential lines, that's all there is, right? What I did is I started a few years ago, I started the John C. Simpson.com site. Thank and, you. you know, and the round? And I did it, and it's John with an HC for cute or whatever, and Simpson like Jessica.com. And I Thank did you, it. very kind I did of it you. Because after a program like this, there's always a question. And, you know, there's the next section of it, the WWJSD section, because I get told a lot of times that I remind people of a couple of different people. I get told that I remind people of Russell Brand sometimes, which isn't bad. Cause Thank really you. Is. And also, I get, <laughs> and sometimes I get told that I remind people of Jesus, which I'm like, okay. <laughs> so I went with it, and I did the WWJSD section, because Jack what is special about it is it's something that colorists from all over the world have asked questions, within the global brand or not. And what I'll do is it's not a hotline, right? So if your client's head is on fire and their oils are falling out, they'll be burnt and bald, but I promise I'll get back to you. Okay? And it really is something that if you want to talk to me about, you know, there's this turquoise color you were talking about. How would you make that in X brand? Right? What were you saying? A silk lift? What? Okay? Or I have a client. And what that does is it's a private conversation between you and I, and then I'll ask you permission to post it. There are lots of them on there, which is really great. But I, but I bring it up, not so just that, but it takes you into even more designs. All of the periods. So go and check that out. My stuff is there, and it's all kind of fun. But also even into the things like LinkedIn and YouTube. That's really something special. And just into the last and next. You know, I started with this slide in the beginning of the day, and it's something of the GoldwellNorthAmerica.com site. And I don't know how many of you have been into our Goldwell education, right? If you've ever visited some of our academies. What's brilliant there is, again, speaking global or not, it takes you through a whole design element, a whole formulation element. If you want to actually create new blondes, and you also maybe have a little fear of it or a challenge of it, there's a brilliant program called um, Blonde Enlightenment. 
If you like some of the design elements and inspiration <coughs> techniques, there's a program that I've created called See It, Think It, Create It. And what it does is it breaks down all the barrier foundations and allows you start to, to start to see and think of hair color a little bit differently. Right? And I think that's what's really, really special about it. In Colors Do, some of you were at our morning presentation, yeah? A couple of people? Translate from Color Zoom and the butterfly effect. It's not about, it, you know, it goes into the whole thing, you know, something happens here and something goes on there, yeah, 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 whatever. What we're looking at is the beauty of the butterfly wing. The head is round, right? The head has contour. So why would I just put a big old box that sits on top of it, right? It just doesn't make any sense. So there, the butterfly wing allows me to create that string, to create the points and the curvatures. But what does the butterfly wing do? All of them are what? Are they ever the same? Never. Right? So why would you use the same foil pattern on the same person every single day? Right? It just doesn't make sense. So you think about the butterfly wing, take block colors, move it into medium colors, and then start to integrate maybe a weaver slice along the way. And I can place it throughout the top lid, throughout the interior, or on the surface. Get as nuts as you want. But changing a technique is no different than actually working in my salon every single day. Right? How do you develop it? I know that I hear all the time that after a program, that you're like, that is awesome. You learn a new hair color trick, right? A technique. Another, another little quickie is I want to just talk about just advancing anything into your color world, right? Always just think about what you do. Always just think about the whys and the hows. And I always like to keep myself in check, right? Because once it gets too familiar, I have a couple other sets of eyes, right, that keep me in check too. They're like, mm, that's a little bit familiar. She's sitting right here. She's squatting right in the middle of the room. Right? <laughs> keeping an eye on things. You keep an eye on things. Yeah. But it's cool because it also you have, just like you find people that will push each other. And what's cool is that you all have that within your back room, within your salon homes, within your studios, right? The person you like to bounce color with, the person that, you know, that just are like, mm, that doesn't look real nice. <laughs> <laughs> you know, maybe you should try this next time. But with it, it is something that I just I enjoy it because it really is easy to fall into something really redundant and complacent into your salon work, right? But that's where I love to hopefully encourage you to find inspiration. You're already really, really great at what you do, right? But even take it a little bit further. And I I strive for you to really find perfection in the work. And as soon as you find perfection, start all over again, right? Because you're never just done. Right? Because as soon as you feel that you are seeing your wicked master colorist of a lifetime, you know, that's awesome. But really, right? You're done at that point. So, you know, I think it's comical, you know, in that whole titling, because I do hear that a lot, and it's, it's okay. But I, that's where I want to just share um, some of those things. The photographic work, just wrapping up the whole Naha piece of it. In the photographic work, and I don't know how many of you have ever entered hair color or into Naha's period, but I really, it starts pushing you. It starts pushing you in the work that you do, and you have that story. And I know at looking at little bits Start and pieces of the journey that I've taken into everything that happens with it, it just exposes you already from your zip code to your state into the globe. Right? And I just think there's so many talents within, especially North America. You know, we're the number one watched people right now for fashion prediction, where that was never before. When I started the industry, it was like you have to look at Italy, you have to look at Germany, and you have to go into um, London. And I'm like, oh, okay. And we were known as business people. I'm like, oh, I'm good. That's awesome. But now, especially on the Hollywood set, right, it's about turning it all out and just really finding inspiration in what you do. So, with it, guys, how do you feel? You feel okay?